Will Democrats mobilize over the prospect of losing their supermajority in the Senate and possibly their grasp on passing a unified health care bill? Join me now is former Massachusetts governor and presidential nominee and current visiting professor of public affairs at UCLA, Michael Dukakis. Governor, welcome. Who do you think is going to win? Well, I'm not optimistic, but um, this is a funny kind of race. Uh, turnout is important. The weather's bad. Uh, belatedly, the Democrats are finally beginning to get their act together. It may be too late. And uh, Zogby, at least, now calls it a dead heat. Um, I'm not sure I agree with that, but I'm 3,000 miles away teaching out here at UCLA, so I'm not on the ground. Um, and um, we'll see tonight. So let me ask you, does a win by the Republican Scott Brown ultimately kill the health care bill? Everyone's very concerned about the outcome of health care in the Senate. Well, I would hope not. And frankly, if he does win, I hope we'll kill the filibuster, something which I think has been as undemocratic as any procedure, any institution in the history of the country. It's been abused by both sides. Um, and uh, if it takes this to finally make it possible for a majority of members of the Senate to vote on important legislation, then that might be a benefit, uh, but it's it's time we got rid of this thing. I mean, the notion that you have to have 60 votes to get anything done in the Senate is preposterous. A majority is 51, not 60, and we've been tolerating this thing for years, and it's now being used all the time by both sides to stop important legislation. So uh, if, in fact, he does win, um, then I would hope that we'd uh, do whatever it takes to get rid of the thing, because uh, it's really just, it, it, only, only one thing is worse, and that is this two-thirds vote for a budget in California, which has turned this place into a totally dysfunctional state. So all that said, if Brown does win, what do the Senate Democrats have to do then to, keep, to, to, to get health care passed? Well, there are ways that they can do this. Uh, they're not as easy and as simple as simply getting a majority of 57 or 58, which is what we have, to pass the bill. But um, the filibuster is just a Senate rule. It's not a law. It's not the Constitution. In fact, it may be unconstitutional. So um, there are ways to do this. But obviously, it would be a lot easier and a lot cleaner at this point to get the 60. But I, I've just, uh, I thought the filibuster for years was just uh, being abused outrageously by both parties. And maybe this is the trigger it needs to finally get rid of the thing. So then what kinds of debate would open up then? What kinds of things do you want to hear talked about on the Senate floor without that filibuster, well, if that's what happens? It's the same thing. It's just that uh, a simple majority can get things done. I mean, there is a good, solid majority of 57 or 58 for a solid national health care bill in the Senate. And uh, to make it possible for 41 people to stop action, no matter who controls the Senate, I don't care if it's the Republicans or the Democrats, um, I think, and I've always felt, was really outrageous. I mean, when I was in the Massachusetts legislature, if you wanted to end debate after a reasonable amount of time, all you had to do was get up and move the question. And it wasn't debatable. It wasn't amendable. You got to vote. And if the majority of the members decided it was time to vote, you voted. And that's, and that's the way, by the way, that it works in the House. And this, this filibuster thing, which um, originally was used on very rare occasions, has now become uh, kind of institutionalized, requiring 60 votes. This country can't function, in my opinion, with a Senate that requires 60 votes to get things done. So, Governor Dukakis, why did you not run for the Senate seat? <laughs> well, I'm 76 years of age. Uh, it's not that I don't feel 36. I do. And I'm married to a great woman who, despite her New England origins, loves Southern California in the wintertime. And so we've been coming out here for 15 years. But... Um, you know, we've got good candidates. Uh, Martha Coakley is a good person. The problem is that I think uh, people assume that once she won the primary nomination, this was going to be easy. I don't know why we need a reminder of this, but no elections are easy, and nobody knows that better than the guy you're talking to. Because I was 40 points ahead in the polls in my first run for re-election as governor of the Democratic primary. Everybody thought it was going to be easy, and I was defeated by a fellow named Ed King, and it took me four years to finally get back and defeat him again. So... Um, if, if, we, if we keep making this mistake over and over again, uh, we're going to get into trouble, and I'm afraid we, we did so in the case of this campaign. Governor Dukakis, many thanks for sharing your experience and your insights. Once again, Governor Michael Dukakis, former Massachusetts governor and presidential nominee, currently UCLA professor of public affairs.